What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another Lumion settings tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about some settings that can help you create a night render inside of Lumion. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this video is based on a settings post that was posted on the Lumion blog on April 30th, where they talked a little bit about some settings that you can use in order to create a night rendering. So we're going to create something very similar to this using one of the example models inside of Lumion. I will link to this blog post in the notes down below. So to start off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up Lumion and we're gonna use one of the example models so that everyone can follow along. So we're just gonna click on examples. And in this situation, I like the Villa Wegner model um, because what it has is it has some holes in the roof that act as kind of skylights um, that are gonna allow us to get some lighting into our scene. So we're gonna open up the Villa Wegner model and take a look at it. All right, and so when our model opens up, the first thing we want to do is just kind of get our bearings inside of the model. So for this particular model, we're going to want to create an interior rendering. So we're just going to fly our camera inside of our building, maybe to about here, something like this, to get kind of an idea of what our scene is going to look like. And so you can fly through the model. You can pick a different view if you want. You could pick like this uh, this uh, hallway or something like that. But in this situation, I think we're going to go ahead and uh, just for simplicity's sake, create a view kind of like this one. And so to start off, what we can do is we can go into photo mode and start taking a look at our different settings. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add a new view. So I want to store this camera over here. So I'm just going to mouse over slot number 10, click on this button right here. And so what that's going to do is that's going to save our camera view and allow us to start adding things to our scene. And so the first thing we want to do, and this is usually a good idea inside of Lumion, it's one of the powers of the program that you want to make sure you take advantage of, is we want to start by using a custom style. And so what the styles are is a style is a collection of presets that are already set up. So you can see how there's uh, presets in here for realistic views, dawn views, overcast. Well, in this particular situation, we want to use the one specifically set up for the night view. That's going to give us a number of different settings that we can start from. And so you can see first thing right now, the lighting on the interior of this model is very strong. So this is already set up to give us a night render with artificial light, but we don't really want artificial light in our scene, except for maybe one light over here. Um, everything else we want to turn off because we want this to be something that's more lit by our exterior environment view. So what we're going to do is we're going to move all of our lights to a layer and we're going to turn them off. So to do that, we're going to go back into build mode and we just want to click on the button for lights. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to select all of our different lights in here. And this scene is set up with a lights layer, but right now all of the lights aren't on that layer. So for example, if I click on this eye right here, you can see how my lights aren't being turned off because these haven't all been put on this layer. So an easy way to do this is to just click on one of these lights. And then what you're going to get is you're going to get a little window right here and yours may look like this. Well, there's a little arrow here on the left hand side that gives you some selection options. And in this particular situation, we want to select all objects in the same category. So when I click on that, what that's going to do is that's going to select all of the artificial lights in my scene. Well, what I want to do then is I want to click this little drop down right here and I want to move these to the lights layer. So when I move these to the lights layer, now if I was to turn all of these off by clicking the little I, you can see how these are all off. So now we want to go back into photo mode and we want to set up our scene so that those lights are all turned off. And then a little later on when we decide to turn one back on, that's going to be really easy as well. So let's go back into photo mode. And the first thing we want to do in our scene is we want to add a layer visibility effect. So we're going to click on add effect right here. We're going to scroll down and I believe this is under objects. So we want to select objects. We want to select layer visibility. And you can see how all of your layer numbers show up in here. What this allows you to do is it allows you to turn on and off different layers in your view. Well, in this case, I'm going to click on six in order to turn the lights off in my scene. So now if I look at my view, you can see how my scene is being lit right now by the environmental lighting, we're not getting any other lighting in here. So that's our first step. So now what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and we wanna turn the sun effect off and we wanna go into our effects and we want to add 
a real sky. And so in, I believe, version 10 of Lumion, they added some night skies that we can use. And we want to go ahead and we want to use those. There are some evening skies, but those are still more daytime or uh, sunset scenes or sunset skies. We want to go into night and select one of these. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start by selecting maybe night number five. So you can see how night number five is going to bring in this real sky. Notice how at the moment the scene looks kind of washed out and the colors don't look very good. Um, that's just because this is a night render and it hasn't calculated what the light's going to do. If you click inside of the preview window, it'll run a quick preview render so you can see what this is going to look like. I think this was added in version 10, by the way. But if you want to see what this is going to look like, just click inside of your viewport in order to get a preview. And so right now, it's a little bit weird because we don't have any artificial lighting in our scene. So what's happening is the real sky is kind of overriding all of this, and it's almost making this look like a cloudy day. And so what I want to do in order to kind of like re-level the lighting in the scene is I'm going to turn one light on over here. That's also going to give us somewhere to draw our eye inside of our rendering. So if we go back to build mode, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find this one light, which sits right here. And I'm going to click on it and I'm going to put that on a different layer. And so I'm just going to add a new layer. And this is going to add a new layer called layer 7, which is fine. We'll just go ahead and go with that. And we'll just move this one light over to layer 7. And so when I click on photo mode now, this is going to have a light inside of it. So you can see how what this is doing is now it's kind of overriding all of the night light, which is not what we want either. So we're going to go back into build mode and we're going to turn the brightness of this light way down. So maybe to something like three for right now. So now if I go back to photo mode, what I get is I get just like a little bit of light inside of this scene over here. And notice how I keep clicking in here to update this to see what this is going to look. Now what we need to do is we need to adjust the color temperature. So that's going to be really important because that's what's really going to give us kind of our nighttime feel in here. Like notice right now this almost feels like a daytime scene. Well part of the reason for that is because our color temperature is so high that everything looks kind of yellow and orange. So we're going to go down to our color correction settings and we're going to adjust our temperature, our tint, and our brightness. So to start off, we're gonna bring our color temperature down. Notice how when I click and drag this to the left, the further to the left this goes, the more blue my scene looks, right? So if I drag this like way left and then do a preview, notice how everything is gonna look very blue. And so basically what this is doing, which is kind of interesting, is it's taking our lighting and um, it's using the color temperature of our light to almost simulate a nighttime look. And we don't want it to be this low. Maybe we want this to be like negative 0.4 or negative negative 0.5 over here, you can click and see that now this looks a lot more like a nighttime render with a little bit of artificial light over here. You can also adjust your tint. Um, don't go too far in one direction or the other because it makes your colors start looking weird, but you can take your tint and maybe move it to like negative 0.1 or 0.2 um, in order to further adjust this look. And then you can also adjust the brightness of this down to maybe like 0.4 or something like that. And basically what we're doing is kind of muting those, uh, those warm colors to simulate more of an evening type um, rendering. So this color temperature step is really important. Make sure that you don't, um, that you don't uh, skip that. So now we've got our color correction set. We've got our real sky in here. We've got our one artificial light. Um, and a couple other things that we want to do inside of our renderings. So the first thing we want to do is we want to add reflection planes to things that are um, supposed to be reflective. So what the reflection planes are going to do is this is actually going to allow this to calculate um, the way that light would bounce off of glass objects. Um, but in this situation, we just want to add a reflection plane. We want to put it on this piece of glass. We also want to add one and put it on the piece of glass up above. So you want to make sure this is actually going on the glass and not on the metal that's up here. We'll go ahead, and then we'll go ahead and come back. And you're not going to see like a huge demonstrable change, but what this is going to do is this is going to make it so that your lighting is a little bit more realistic. So now we've got reflection planes on those. And uh, note that those will negatively affect your performance. So don't put like 500 of them in here because it'll take forever to render. Just put them in places where you need them um, in order to highlight reflections of light. 
And then there's a couple other settings in here that we also want to change. So the first is we want to take our hyperlight. We want to turn that all the way up. And so basically hyperlight is just kind of an enhancement that Lumion uses in order to make your lighting more realistic. So if you turn your hyperlight up, then um, it's the way that this calculates is going to look better and it's going to be more realistic. Note though, again, that that will probably negatively affect your performance a little bit. And then the other thing we want to do is we want to turn up our skylight. And so the reason we want to turn up our skylight is that's going to up the power of the lighting coming from our sky. So in this situation, right, we've got our light in here and it kind of threatens to overwhelm the overall lighting in our scene. So we turn that down in order to mitigate some of that, but we also want to go in and turn our skylight effect up to two. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn this up to two. We're gonna go ahead and turn on skylight and planar reflections and projected reflections. And we're gonna go ahead and set this to ultra. Note again that ultra is going to make your rendering take longer. But now if we render this out, notice how we're getting more emphasis on the lighting coming from our environment rather than this artificial light right here. And you could adjust that back down. So if you didn't want to do that and you wanted more light to be coming from, you wanted more focus to be on the interior light, you could turn your skylight down. In this situation, we're going to turn this all the way up just like this. And then finally, and this is something that they recommend in the blog post, is there's a setting in here that's going to affect the way that your, uh, your image is post-processed. So, and that is going to be under advanced, you're gonna to wanna to look for the print poster enhancer. Basically what this does, it's not a denoiser, I don't think, but it's kinda of like that. What it does is it goes through and it removes out um, different artifacts that are inside of your view. So if there are kinda of noisy areas or areas where things aren't super clear, this will go through and this will enhance that. Note though that that is going to add probably 30 to 50% extra render time to your overall render. So now we've got our settings kind of set up, now we want to render our image. So we're just going to go over into render photos. And in this situation, I'm just going to, we'll go ahead and render this to our print resolution. So maybe a little bit higher resolution. We'll just click on this right here. It's going to ask us to save this. So we'll just call this interior night rendering. We'll click on save. What this is gonna do is this is gonna go through and it's gonna render out our image. Notice this takes significantly longer. If you pick that, uh, that 3840 by 2160, but it's gonna come through and it's gonna render out this image. So this is gonna sit here and work on this for a little while and then we can come back and take a look at our result. So overall, our night render looks pretty good. There are a couple things that I'm going to adjust real quick because it came out a little darker than I expected. Um, note that we are getting reflections from that reflection plane, which really adds to the realism of this render. But let's go back and make a couple quick changes um, just to kind of brighten this up. All right, so in this situation, probably the one thing I would do, um, maybe the two things I would do is I would go back and I would adjust the brightness of the real skies because um, that image was kind of dark so what I might do is I might bring my brightness up a bit and also my overall brightness a little higher as well so that's going to give me a little bit more of this blue light in my scene I might also turn up my exposure a little bit so go over into your exposure settings maybe bring that up a little bit too so if you do get a scene like this one that comes out a little bit dim you can adjust those exposure settings in order to get a different look but overall I'm happy with the quality of the rendering that's being uh, put out, I just want to make sure that I've kind of fine-tuned it and adjusted it so that I can get the look that I'm going for. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought was as helpful to you. Have you done interior night renders in Lumion? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.